this one into the night. Jimmy Rollins is going to turn for three. Here he comes. In the air, down the right field line. What's going on, everybody? You're listening to another episode of the Phillies Nation podcast coming at you with another busy week of, um, you know, off-season baseball. Um, less than two months away from opening day, which is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Um, and we, we do have some more Phillies news to talk about. Um, this week, I am joined by Ray Dunn, um, host of the Dunn Deal Pod. You can follow him on Twitter. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself a little bit he's been on the pod before yeah i feel like i'm the floating head of phillies talk <laughs> i don't really have a place people just kind of pull me out of the air and and that's where i fill in but it's exciting to be back um yeah i host done deal podcast you can follow me at rate on btb uh brace yourselves if you do follow me it's it's a wild ride uh there's a lot that happens there yeah uh, go follow Ray. Uh, he does a also does a fun promo in season, um, but you know that it's not in season right now. So we don't no, we don't need to talk about that. Ring It. I'm bigger yeah. than a than a home run. <laughs> so, anyways, um, you know, like I said, uh, busy week of Phillies baseball. Destiny and I recorded on Saturday because the Phillies signed you to Curious, um, and. We're recording now on Wednesday night. Um, they have con- they they uh, the team announced that they signed Matt Moore today, although we knew that last week to a three million dollar deal over one year. And then there are also reports today that they signed Chase Anderson, another starting pitcher, um, to a one year four million dollar deal. So Ray, what is your initial takeaway from from these lower end rotation signings? This is. I feel like this is going up to the dartboard blind, not blindfolded, but throwing with your left hand. And you're just throwing as many darts as you can because you want to see how accurate you can be and you can see whether or not you hit and get that bullseye. They're not really putting their best foot forward in terms of going out and getting talent, but they've got kind of an idea of what they want to see and they're they're trying to make it look like they're making efforts. There's a lot... And we could get into the specifics of what I do and don't like about these guys because I, I did I did a little bit of homework on on what I'm what I do and don't like uh, with regards to these guys. But it it seems like they're like new pitching coach. This is our messiah. We're gonna put we're gonna believe in that, and we're gonna just go out and get guys who throw. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's the biggest thing, uh, right? Is is they're getting guys who can throw. And we're coming off a season in which, you know, teams only played 60 games. Guys who usually have 30 starts only had 12. And we don't really know, like, what impact that's, that's going to have. Like, is Aaron Nola going to be able to pitch 200 innings? Who knows? Um, you know, and then you have Spencer Howard. He only pitched 25 innings last year. He's not going to make more than I, – I would be so- shocked if he made more than, like, 15 or 18 starts as a Philly. So when you, when, when you consider this, I think – um, they just want to make sure they have enough arms that can eat innings. Um, I think what surprised me, I really thought after Gregorius, after they signed Gregorius, I thought they were done, like, giving out any major league deals. Um, because, like, like more, I mean, we already knew about that when they, when they signed Gregorius, but more, that's $3 million guaranteed. Anderson, $4 million guaranteed. So these guys, they're going to be on the major league roster. Like, this isn't like, all right, uh, we'll take a flyer on this guy, you know, a million and a half guaranteed if, uh, if he pitches well in spring training, like these guys are probably, I would say there's an 85% shot they're in the rotation. Um, so I, I'm a little surprised, I guess, but it, it, at, the, at the same time, it does um, make a little bit of sense, especially like I, I was thinking about this earlier. Would you rather have signed for, for you know, looking at how it's gone for a, a similar amount of money, would you rather have to sign Andrelton Simmons and Charlie Morton that's like $25 million or Gregorius, these two guys, Von Nova for like $23 million. What, what route would you rather take? Honestly, I'd probably lean towards the Simmons Morton. Mm -hmm. And that's just because of my lack of belief in the back end of the rotation. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
It's tough. You you really you it is. it's like you plug a hole and you're ripping a hole open as you do it. Right. Right. Well well the, the thing there is like Morton's kind of old. You don't know like what if he if he gets injured? I mean, you don't think he's going to get injured, but again, with everything all the circumstances and everything. You you just need guys who can eat innings. So it's I guess it's a little riskier. I do agree. I think if you're going to try to win, you just got to like get higher end guys. I, I don't think the gap between, you know, what what uh, Gregorius and Simmons bring you like right. It's, you know, defense, offense, whatever. Both make an impact. Yeah. Um and I I but, think to the point you're making there is, you know, as much as I'd love the fun of Gregorius and obviously the home run guy I am, I'd rather have Gregorius than Simmons. But on the same token, the teams that are, that are going to have the staying power, like the end of the season last year, our entire conversations as the playoffs came around were, well, the Phillies could give someone trouble with the Nola Wheeler one-two punch. You know, when it comes down to meaningful games and meaningful contention, it's pitching that's going to get that right. done. Right. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a great point. Um, and like the weird thing, I think too, I, I saw a couple of people making the point um, on Twitter, like, Oh, I would rather give $7 million to one good starter than, um, you know, like you said, throw darts with your left hand at the same time, like Chris Archer got six and a half million dollars. So like, I don't know, I'm okay with the strategy of, you know, Chase Anderson, he stunk last year, but the few years before he was fine. Um, Matt Moore, his velocity was up last year. We believe that he can, you know, uh, and he also pitched a lot of innings, you know, he, they, they played more games in Japan and, and they think he's got a healthy arm that can, um, you know, pitch a lot of innings, but yeah, we can, we can dive into both of those guys. Um, so Moore, he hasn't been, I wouldn't say effective in the majors since probably 2016. Um, hasn't pitched in the majors since 2019 he made two starts with the tigers um but as i mentioned just now he was in the japanese league last year and he pitched pretty well um a, a 2.65 era over 15 starts so uh what, what what are your thoughts on on more i like more as as the reclamation project when they signed him obviously i wasn't like jumping for joy this wasn't the Wow, it's Matt Moore. And I think Matt Moore, for someone that's been half asleep since the Phillies fell into this kind of rebuild, reload, whatever decade, they might remember him in, in 2013 as the, the guy who was an all-star and actually, you know, was looking to be a front-end type piece for years to come. So people who have been half asleep, they were awoken by this name or like, oh, that's awesome. This is not the Matt Moore you're getting. I think the velocity being up a year ago is really good because that's where his struggles were. Once the velocity dipped after elbow injuries, the fastball, his fastball and his cutter were pretty much the same speed and they, he wasn't getting the same movement. He got hit around a lot. His off speed wasn't too off speed because his fastball just wasn't there. Um, I think, like you said, him getting all those innings in Japan last season will help him. I think he's going to be there in the in the rotation to start the season honestly i don't see any reason why he wouldn't be yeah uh, yeah i i agree with that for sure um and and i think i think the idea that his, his velocity is up you know if it doesn't work out maybe he's he's out of the bullpen you, you never know i think i think he's got a better shot to come out of the bullpen not not that that's what they're counting on but him over over anderson in that regard um speaking of anderson yeah, um we can get to that because <laughs> uh anderson Ooh. honestly like i i just i i don't want to take too much stock in what happened last year really with anyone um just because it was such a weird year because guys were you know they were getting ready to pitch in spring training and then shut down for three months and then and then they came back so uh anderson was bad last year like that's uh pretty obvious he had a era over seven in, in 10 games um but in the in the several years before that he um, he was, you know, around a three and a half or four ERA kind of pitcher. Um, he's not like a, a dominant guy or anything. No. He doesn't strike a ton of guys out. He, he's, you know, pitched to contact and all that, but he gets outs. Um, and he's, he's pitched in uh, like roughly 150 in it, 
150 innings each the previous, you know, four seasons prior to last year. So like, again, it's, 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 let's get this guy who we think can just, you know, be our Jake Arrieta this year. Like they, like Jake Arrieta, I know he was a disappointment, but like they need someone to fill that hole. And like, I think, you know, right. more. and, and uh, when you get into the Chase Anderson discussion, for me, it's reminding myself that you need mediocre pitchers just to be trotted out there every five days. So I'm fine with it. I'm again, I'm concerned because the way he pitched and the way he was good, you know, 2017 was kind of the year for him where he was at his best and the way he pitched then versus the way he pitches now. I mean, he's, he's using his fastball a lot less. Uh, he's used his curveball less the changeup. He's using way more and the changeup isn't his best pitch and his fastball. When he did use it, it was getting just hit all over the ballpark last season. Again, you say it's not a normal season. It's not, I'm not going to, you know, end his career over 2020. He did. But, listen, he also did give up five home runs in a six plate appearance stretch against the Yankees. That did hurt him a little bit. That, that did hurt him. Uh, it also <laughs> did happen. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, and, and I think the, the one thing that I'm going to look for, in Chase Anderson to see what version the Phillies are going to get is the control of his curveball. Because in, in 2017, he was able to keep it low and into lefties and low and away to righties. In 2020, that was just all over the place. He didn't have a real zone where he kept it. It was just kind of all over. He didn't really have the control that he used to have of it. So I'm concerned. That's something where I think if you see Chase Anderson – using his curveball efficiently early on, you're going to get the mediocre to slightly good Chase Anderson that would be of help for the Phillies. If not, I, I, I'm going to wipe my hands clean. I'm, pro- I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, the, the point you made about, like, you do have to have, you know, uh, a guy who's not great out there at least every fifth day. And I think, like, people who have watched the Phillies, like, you know, we've, we've watched the Phillies our whole lives. I think we were spoiled because like the rotation that they had in, in 2010, 2011, 2012, like that, that has, I think, skewed everyone's reality of what like an actual MLB rotation look like, looks like, like Vince Velasquez is a fine number five in a rotation. Like, you know, guys like that, are, listen, he is, he is. That, see, I disagree with that point because there are going to be multiple stretches where he only gives you three. Like my, I want mediocre guys who are going six, seven innings. Vince is sure. going to throw a hundred through four and a third and be just absolutely gassed. Yeah. But if he's wearing the red jerseys, you know, he's striking out 17. Right. So well, yeah. That's so, why they need to bring them back, but yeah, it's another, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's another but, podcast. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do think they are done signing starters. No Cole Hamels reunion. Um, unless, which, yeah. Which, to be honest, didn't make sense. I understand this is titled Phillies Nation, and I understand there's going to be people who are diehard Cole Hamels that listen, and I apologize in advance. You can send me your hate mail. <laughs> it was never a good idea. He's yeah. old. He's not been able, he's been struggling through injury. He didn't get a lot off the mound. Really, his last continued stretch was in 2019. Like, that's not something that sets you up for a successful 2021. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he appeared in one game last year. Um, the PR would be great, but yeah. it's not It's not a baseball move. For sure. Um, like, like, these are guys, Anderson, Moore, who you hope can be healthy. Um, and, you know, if you're going that route, then Hamels isn't the guy. But... Um, some more rumors today. Um, John Heyman linked the Phillies to a few bench bats, which I think when you look at the makeup of the roster right now, like maybe one more reliever um, is in play, um, like a Jose Alvarez or, or, or lower end guy. I think that the rotation set, I think the lineups set, um, but they, they really need a bench bat right now. Uh, Mickey Moniak and well, not Mickey Moniak, Adam Hazley or Andrew Knapp or Mickey Moniak is your, is your best left-handed hitter off the bench. Like one of those guys. Are they going to come in and hit the Matt Stairs home run? You know, I, I don't. Are they even getting a base knock? <laughs> I don't see it personally. Um, 
I just went off on a little tangent there before I actually said what John Heyman tweeted, which is that the Phillies um, are interested in uh, Marwin Gonzalez, whom the, uh, they were linked to by Jim Salisbury yesterday, um, and also Brad Miller, fan favorite Brad Miller, you know, one of the greatest Phillies of all time, I would say. Um, look at the numbers. And um, Shin Su Chu, who I think is, you know, greatly underrated. I don't know if he can play in the field anymore, but Ray, do you have, if the Phillies were to sign one of these guys, do you have a preference among the three? I love Bamboo Brad. And, and uh, honestly, it gets into the the baseball move versus heart move type of deal. But it to me, it makes sense. Like, I think that he would be a really solid option for them just to trot out there off the bench. I think he gives a pop to the bench. He gets on base. He can actually, you know, like work a count, um, which would be just a wild, wild setup for – uh, and I think he would just be someone good to have back on that team. So he I'm in wear, favor. He doesn't wear batting gloves. Like he's cool. He a, yeah, he's he's super cool. I think they did like him in the clubhouse um, a couple of years ago, at least from what people have said. And yeah, like I think when you when you sign someone, like I think I think Shin Tzu Chu's awesome. Can he play in the outfield anymore? Like like you have to sign someone with the intent of like, all right, we're gonna give Andrew McCutcheon. Probably, like, how many games does Andrew McCutcheon play this year? 130? Like, that's kind of where I would set the bar, maybe, if there's no DH. Um, because we saw in the field last year, he, he couldn't really move that well. Um, and he's, you know, he's getting older. So they need someone who can play a lot, um, and preferably a left-handed bat. And I think Miller, I agree, Miller makes the most sense. Marwan Gonzalez, like, he he's fine. Um, and he can play a few different positions. He's like a switch hitter, but he he can't really hit. He doesn't hit that well from the left side. So it kind of defeats the purpose of, of adding a left-handed bat if, if he's, you know, better, much better right-handed. Um, so I, I do think Miller is, is the correct move. Um, but, yeah. I also like, and I, this, for me, again, this might be an asterisk thing, but the, the drop-off of, of 2017 Houston Astros since that year, Marwin Gonzalez is like a poster child of that. Like, he's got he's got a name because basically that Astros team was so good, they were like, yeah, go play literally wherever, and you're going to give us product productivity since that year right, right down, right down the slope. So right. I'm I'm not a Gonzalez guy by any means. I think that they can do a lot better, and I think by doing a lot better, that would be Brad Miller. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, everyone at Phillies Nation, like collectively, both like in our Phillies Nation group chat and also just on Twitter, um, have always been talking about how the Phillies should have signed Brad Miller last year, how they should sign him this year. Ty wrote, Ty Dobbert wrote an article about it. Um, I think we were proven right last year because he raked, and yeah, I think yeah. they should probably re-sign him but um you know that's just i imagine that's a wild place the phillies nation group chat um yeah sometimes sometimes um yeah so i think we should just talk in general like things are slowing down in, in terms of the baseball offseason um a couple big names and i think one in particular really pertinent to the phillies outlook this season is, is marcel ozuna um, do you like right now, I know the, the, the Braves, obviously he's a big player for the Braves. The Rays were linked to him. Um, how much, how much of an impact do you think Marcelo Zuna will have on the NL East? Like his, where he signs, how much of an impact do you think that has? I think it's got a, a tremendous, tremendous impact on, on the way this, this division shakes out. I mean, obviously he had, a 60 game stretch to end all 60 game stretches uh, a year ago with the Braves. And, and if he's able to replicate that, if he were to be able to replicate that over 162 games, I think you would be hearing his name all over the board. Obviously he's not going to do that. Um, However, you're still looking at someone who's probably going to hit 30, 35 homers. And, and is going to be a you know considerable bat in the middle of a lineup, and I think if the Braves don't get him, it opens up the rest. It opens up the division more 
I, I don't know if it, it takes them away from the top spot or if it, you know, if you might have the Mets in the top spot already. I don't know. We haven't had that conversation. Um, but I think if, if he doesn't go back to the Braves, I really, really think that that top spot becomes, okay, let's have an open dialogue. That doesn't mean I think the Phillies are in the dialogue for that top spot, but I think the division as itself opens up the race. I think the Braves, they retain him, and they just, to me, that lineup just seems good enough to keep them where they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with that. And I think, like, the the, the Braves' rotation obviously has improved. Um, they've got some young guys they added. Uh, Drew Smiley and uh, Charlie Moore in this offseason. Both former Phillies. Both former Phillies. Some would say that the Phillies revived both of their careers. Um, you know, just... Some would say leaving the Phillies, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Not going there. Charlie Warren was throwing 96 in a Phillies uniform. That happened. Whatever. And, and why wasn't he? Never mind. You know what? You can't go back in history. <laughs> he got hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. We can't rewrite yeah. anything. Um, Anyways, back to Marcelo Zuna, like, like that leaves a, a, a big, that would leave a big hole in their lineup. And, and, you know, maybe they could get off, away with depending on their rotation more. I don't know. Um, I still think they probably are the best team in the division. I still think, mm, I don't know if the Mets are too. I think they probably are if everyone's healthy. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree. Like, like the, the Braves, so much of them winning the last two years has just been them making like the best one year signings ever. Like Josh Donaldson was coming off a season in which he was traded to the Indians and like was horrible and was always hurt. And then he just, he went off and was like the third baseman in the game, best third baseman in the game. And then last year, like you said, Ozuna was, you know, maybe a top two hitter in baseball. So, um, you know, what is that lineup when they don't have that? You know, what is that lineup if Travis Darnell doesn't, continue to be Mike Piazza like who knows um it does make it uh, a little bit more interesting um yeah so that's actually going to do it for this episode of the Phillies Nation podcast uh thank you to everyone for listening um just a couple weeks until pitchers and catchers report to spring training which is happening I know there was a lot of talk about whether or not it would happen you know within the next couple weeks but it will so until next time Oh, 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 oh,